For years, people have been organizing for criminal legal reform. People have been on the streets. People have been at county council meetings. This is a very unique time in history that we are at. What's happening right now in King County isn't happening anywhere else in the country. We are trendsetters. Black Lives Matter. No new youth jail or block the bunker. Community has been saying these things for years and years and years. It's us as the government that is catching up now. Has a criminal justice system changed the rates of violence in the communities? Has locking people up been the answer to the problem? If you look around, no, it hasn't. Putting young people in a cage or using punitive systems as a means of controlling behavior does not result in the best outcomes for youth. It is now that we have to do something different. My name is Sean Good. I'm a father, husband, and executive director of Choose 180. The earliest engagement I have with the criminal legal system is at the age of six. It's also the earliest memory I have of my brother, who at the age of 13 was found guilty and sentenced to serve time in a kid jail until he was a 21-year-old man. I have missed many memories with my brother, many moments that we weren't able to share together because he was locked up, because he was incarcerated. Because at that time, in our community, there were no alternatives to incarceration. It was simply, you do the crime, you do the time. And what we've learned over these decades is that when you incarcerate a child, you limit their ability to live beyond the mistake that they may have made, and you prohibit them from truly experiencing the possibility that they are. I am Nikita Oliver, and I am the co-executive director of Creative Justice. You know, this summer, a lot of people uh, saw the protests, the uprising and resistance in a very visceral way and experienced that in our city. But Nonu Youth Jail has been an eight-year struggle to push King County to do something different. The Youth Jail took eight years to build. At every stage of the development process, we asked to halt the building, to put a moratorium on building it, to commit to repurposing the building or not to build it at all. My name is Dominique Davis, AKA Coach Dom. I'm the CEO and founder of Community Passageways. I'm from this Rainier Beach area. This is my neighborhood. I grew up in it my whole life. I was out here in these streets. I, I ran up and down these streets. Now I do this work so young people can fulfill their dreams and have opportunities not to fall into these traps in the streets. The criminal justice system has literally decimated our black community. It has snatched fathers, brothers, uncles, coaches, mentors out of our community at a rate that I can't even, I, I can't wrap my head around. So we're trying to bounce back from this. We're trying to build back up from this. I'm Carissa Morikawa with Choose 180. I am the Director of Community Engagement and Systems Innovation. So about a year and a half ago, um, when I was in my role as a community navigator, working with young people being faced by their first felony offense, 
the court invited me into a meeting with the prosecuting attorney's office and the Department of Public Defense trying to figure out how they could make the courts more therapeutic and create a community approach. So they invited me into the space because they were thinking to do a program similar to what it was that I was working on. When I entered in and I listened that they were trying to create a community-based route for young people, I looked around the room and I realized that there was no one who was working in the community in that space. So I asked us to take a pause to talk to the community and figure out what it was that the community wanted rather than to just create something in this room. And I was told no. So what I did is I went and I met with some of our partners. You know, I met with Nikita Oliver, I met with Dominique Davis from Creative Justice and Community Passageways. We then very quickly mobilized. We created focus groups with over 50 community providers and we met with young people and young adults who have been through the juvenile legal system. And we asked them what kind of program they would wanna see. The answer was loud and clear. They wanted a route that lived solely in community and, and completely outside of the criminal legal system. Restorative Community Pathways is a change in the way that we provide community care for young people. It is acknowledging that there are many factors, systemic, institutional, community contexts that impact the reasons why youth may find themselves involved in the criminal punishment system. So Restorative Community Pathways is exactly what it sounds like. It is a community response to harm that's goal is restoration and healing. Restorative Community Pathways represents an opportunity to do something different that interrupts the school to prison pipeline, dismantles it, and also ensures that young people and families have a continuum of care and support that changes the material conditions that we are living in. Y'all, you gotta go to court more. I be in King County Courthouse with young folks sometimes, and it's almost exclusively black and brown folks on one side of the glass and white folks on the other. The white yes. folks are the judges, the prosecutors, and the defense attorney, and black and brown folks are routinely the people being prosecuted. It's unacceptable. Yes. Unacceptable. It is unacceptable. So here in King County, every year, about 1,000 young people are prosecuted through the juvenile legal system. In the first year of Restorative Community Pathways, 40% of those young people are going to be diverted away from the legal system and instead served directly in community by community. In the next two to three years, we expect that about 70 to 85% of the young people currently being prosecuted in the legal system would instead be served by Restorative Community Pathways. This is a really big deal. When I started at Choose 180, I was a community navigator working with young people being prosecuted with their first felony offense. The beauty of Restorative Community Pathways is that the job I was doing is actually no longer going to exist. Instead, the young people who are being charged with their first felony offense are now going to be served by Restorative Community Pathways and not have to go through the legal system at all. Good morning, Council. Uh, Sean Good here, Executive Director of Choose 180. I'm calling in today in support of the $6.2 million for restorative community pathways. Absent of any. There's just this beautiful moment of synergy where everybody is asking for the same thing, and our organizations were perfectly positioned to co create an alternative that would meet that need. The need for young people to not be criminalized for their behavior, but have the opportunity to pause, pivot, and commit to a new direction. Community is a much better place than a courtroom for a young person. And we believe wholeheartedly that the hundreds of young people that will be served by RCP will have outcomes that far supersede anything that the court was able to produce through their antiquated ways. I'm King County Council Member Gurmai Zahalai, representing King County District 2. The problem with the institutions that we have today at the government level, whether it is policing or courts or jails, is that they don't address the root of the issue. 
If a young person is arrested and prosecuted and taken to jail, we don't know what's been going on with them to lead them to commit a crime. These systems that we have in place don't address poverty, they don't address trauma, they don't address anything really that caused the crime. And so what's really exciting about Restorative Community Pathways is that it develops a solution that matches the problem. And the problem is that our young people don't have the support they need to be successful. After the police murdered George Floyd earlier this year, we saw a movement that was on a scale we've never seen before. Millions of people around the country stood up and said no more. Tens of thousands were marching in the streets in South Seattle. I grew up in, the, in South Seattle. I've never seen that many people in one place at one time all shouting the same thing, Black Lives Matter. This past June, when so many people were in the streets on a regular basis, it was a realization that people are finally connecting the dots, that defunding the police, dismantling the criminal punishment system, changing the way our communities receive resources and have the ability to advocate for ourselves and provide for ourselves are all keys to achieving zero youth detention. Community has been saying these things for years and years and years, whether it's no new youth jail or block the bunker, their message has not changed. It's us as the government that is catching up now. And through their grassroots activism, they've been able to create the political will for so many of us elected officials to finally catch up and not gatekeep anymore, but actually build with them and acknowledge that they're right. There is a better way of doing things. Moving our county to do something different has been eight years of continuous work that is everything from developing programs, what are the alternatives, to being on call after call, convincing politicians of what the numbers have already been telling us for a very long time, and getting them to understand that community-based, community-led responses to harm and violence are actually what will stop harm and violence in the first place. In order to get to something different, you have to grind. We are grinding this out because we had to build structures and put in place to change the system. People go out and protest, but once the protest is over, us as community members doing this community work and doing this systems change work, we are grinding. We're up late at night, we're up early in the morning, we're driving all over the place, and on top of that, we still have to do the community work in the streets too. Council members on the line? Aye. Council members on the line, what's aye? Madam Chair? Aye. Madam Chair, the vote is 9 9 0 Well, by our vote, we have adopted proposed ordinance 2020 dash, let me get the right one, this time 0306 as amended unanimously. Congratulations, Madam Chair. It is a budget. <laughs> I am so excited uh, that the King County Council unanimously voted to fully fund a restorative community pathways. Because to me, I mean, this means that King County has committed to divesting millions of dollars from a harmful and punitive system to community-led responses to harm that are rooted in restorative justice. It's important that you take time to celebrate moments like this and then also allow them to live in the context of the years and years and years of harm that have been done to black and brown communities. And I'm excited that people who have been walking barefoot on glass through systems of injustice have finally been given a pair of shoes. Yeah, I'm excited. Maybe now we clear the path so they no longer have to walk on glass and then we can truly begin to have a conversation about equity. That being said, the support that galvanized around this moment proves that we can travel this thing and we can travel it together on this journey towards justice with one another. Try to tell us that we ain't ancestors. 
Developing news, and tonight we are learning more about a plan to get rid of two jails in King County. Today, County Executive Dow Constantine spoke about plans to not only... No brain, cocaine, just vanity. Uh, no name, like they hooping, or they trafficking, or where they run this institution just like an academy. Yeah. Tell me who achieves and tell me who dies. Use the power of the greed to fight with black lives. Glorify material and that's why For one pair of two threes He gets shot with four fives Oh my god, it's so wrong For every blooming flower There's a snake in the garden Oh my lord, it's so wrong The race still enslaved We just changed the laws uh, They say the hangman left, huh? huh? Yeah. Why we hanging ourselves, huh? huh? New wage, old debts, no change New slaves, new chains on the next one